Okay, it's been many months since I did an update and uh, figured I'm getting close to closing things up and hanging the engine. So I figured I'd uh, do a bit of an update on the project and where it's at on the uh, Carbon Cub EX2. So this is what the uh, status of it is right now. We have the fuselage in the garage here still at home. The wings are done and painted and down at the hangar. It's all painted with Stuarts, all done in the booth that I had built in the garage. So, Anyway, I'm going to take you through a few, a few of the things that uh, might help people that are building. And uh, we'll just work our way, I guess, from tail to nose and uh, finish off there. Got the Alaska bush, bush wheels. Uh, on here and um, I've got the uh, 31 inch on the front and then the baby bush wheel or the back tail wheel all the flying wires are on elevators I've got an issue with the elevators that uh, there's an alignment issue on the horn so I might be building a new elevator or two covering and painting that is a bit of disappointment there's a screw up there Anyway, just dealing with the factory on it now. Um, got the light I have to put in. And um, for the most part, that's done. All the inspection panels have been finished on it. I still have the striping to do on this side. This is the X2 model, and it's actually got a little different uh, jack screw setup to give uh, more trim. Uh, nose down trim is my understanding that the cub runs out of, and they fix that on this. So the, you'll see that the actual spar is above the bracket, not like the EX model. So you got to make sure you put it in properly or else you'll be taking the whole thing apart. Ask me how I know the manual's not up to date for that. So, so that's what that all looks like. These are just vinyl. Uh, the rest, of course, is paint. I When I masked it, I pulled the, the tapes dry. I uh, I pulled them wet on the super stall. And less of an edge but a lot of, uh, when you pull them wet but more risk of getting um, the masking that you're pulling off into the wet paint. So And just fitting the windows. This is the luggage door. As you can see and the luggage that's inside. So just stock this is all well, it's extended baggage is what this is so not quite pleased with how that is um here is the door i've kept it all black inside i didn't do the stripe i find it when the door is open it looks better without the stripe i think so anyway might add it later on again i got the striping to do on here so yeah so that's how that looks um, I went with the uh, extended 3x3 three three gear and the uh, shocks as well. So uh, I'm planning to do lots of off-field flying like I did with the super stall on it. So here's the interior. Um, just did the last fit up and checks, which is what I'm going to take you through on the technical end. But I'm just kind of showing what the aircraft looks like right now. I put the PC680, I might change it to the Earth X battery. Um, I just, lots more confidence in the PC680. It's been always been reliable for me and I'm, I'll be landing this in the middle of nowhere often and your best survival kit is a good battery. So, um, so what I've done on the panel, I've gone with the G3X panel from them with the uh, remote transponder and GTR200. I have gone with the autopilot. I figure I'll let the plane do the flying and I'll enjoy the scenery. Uh, I put the a bracket up here for my ELT so I can see and I've got the buzzer on the back side of that as well. So this is all working and uh, ready to be closed up. And I put a switch up top. I got to change the label but that's actually a fan switch uh, so I can turn the defrost fans on that you'll see shortly. 
So yeah, so that's what that ends up looking like. So this is the uh, panel work. I'll just do a quick scan around, then I'll go into a bit of detail, I guess, of what I've done. Anything that uh, I guess I can point out that might help other people that are going to be or are working on this area. So. So this is the backup battery for the uh, G3X and then you've got the backup battery is going to go in there for the electronic ignition. It's dual light speeds. So you got to make sure you keep this clear of the cup holder. So I've drilled a hole in here and I put a, a, a tie off with a wax line. So you can see in here and that keeps that cable nice and clean. The main bundle I put some anti-chafe on it. And everything basically runs up that way. I've tied off the line. Here I've used different fittings. These are the fittings from Stein, I believe. I have them in my box of goodies, so um, much easier for disconnecting. And if you're changing some routing and stuff like that, it makes it easier. These are the tornado fans that are going to go in. So this is the defrost. I'll show you on the boot cowl shortly. But they'll sit somewhere about here, so that'll help cool everything as well as defrost the front windscreen. Manifold pressure gauge is here. So as it comes off, it tees in, and it just they just have the silicone rubber line going out. I'm not too crazy about that. I like the idea of going with a, a fitting on the firewall and then going with a hard stainless braid line to the engine, but they got enough of them flying and they haven't had issues, so I'll uh, leave it like that for now anyway. Um, I leak test the system prior to before I put the boot cowl on because uh, I think if you had some leaks in any of these fittings I know I can take the EFAS off but it's going to be a lot of cursing to actually uh, get it to work so so the ignition key switch is here and I pretty well wax line tied everything uh, the only non wax stuff is what I had at the factory I just find it's better and less chance of ever cutting yourself if you don't clip the the actual ties close enough when you're when you're cutting them off so so the ignition I tied off here it's going to be exiting somewhere in this area so I put a shrink wrap on there and that's where it'll come out of the firewall um, and these are all marked off of how they end up coming out so all these will end up getting put through the firewall when I install the boot cowl the coil wires go underneath okay so I did a bit of a standoff of the hole they have here and then it's going to exit I think I'll be back I think this looks too long so I'll probably be tying this off with a bit of s turns in here but I can still get at that when it's on so I'll see how long it ends up and I'll use that area for tying it off uh, brake lines you'll see the more fluid a bit again here but there's the little wee cylinders uh, reservoirs, I should say, for the for the cylinders. So, and then I've got the push to talk and the um, autopilot off on the uh, stick. And then I have the uh, 232 from the Garmin. Uh, I just have to have the splitter here for the ELT, so it gives a GPS location. So I've wired that into here. I could have wired it, I guess, up underneath the panel, but I. I wanted the 232 going direct to the actual um, ELT instead of going through a whole bunch of different connectors. So I had a little less connectors going this way. Uh, as you get on this side, and you've got the primer line. So I've put that on. These do not get soldered in here. They're just basically a press fitting that goes in. So you slide the coupler on, put it on, tighten it. I've put the Dell clamps to keep things separated and a bit of shrink wrap on that just to eliminate any chance of uh, chafing or anything wearing on it. And then I did a Dell clamps in here. I looked at where the exits were and the exit looks like it's about in this area. So I put the Dell clamps in to tie things off as well as the fuel line. So you got to watch how this works for the panel that you got your exit point. And I put a 
uh, extra protection on the fuel line again. I've got a plastic cover underneath it and I've done with them um, uh, tape plus I put some zip ties just so that I worry about that rubbing. I don't know you guys if you've noticed it but it, it definitely I would think is going to hit when it's on. So that'll, that'll be rubbing on the fuel line. If you cut it out further it just means that this panel will move in more so um, make sure that fuel line's well protected. So here's where the main starter cable comes through. So I've got it tied off and it's going to exit the cowling firewall about here. And um, yeah, that's basically how all of the, the tie offs end up working in there. I've tied these off. Hopefully this works out accordingly. Um, I just use the zip ties like they showed to do. I could possibly get an Adele clamp in through there, but um, Needless to say, you've got a drain for water and uh, this line is going to be for the actual, uh, goes to the gas escalator for the fuel. And this is a drain line for water coming from the, uh, I guess it'd be from the left wing. And then the, you want to tie off your antenna for your transponder and it's going to go into the, in this area, sit about like that. So. Uh, you'll see how I've tied everything off here too and use the wax line back to the frame keep everything clear of the cables on the elevator and I'll take his up to the servo so you can see how that looks as well so underneath the airplane is a access panel in here is where you have all your uh, starter relays and master relay and such so uh, they've got a 40 amp breaker just to protect the wire that's to send power to the main bus. And um, yeah, so again, keeping all the wires clear of the cable run. You'll notice the servo is up here and it's, it's hard to see, but this will get drilled once I'm satisfied with the rigging of the airplane. But right now it's just kind of clamped. And once it's drilled and that'll under the torque tube for the autopilot, and once I can rig the actual elevators, I will fasten the cable system here for the elevator portion of the autopilot. And this is where you connect your aileron cables. So, so yeah, that's how that all looks. I still got some cotter pins to put in here. There was none of these bigger ones, not enough in the kit anyway. So I've got to buy some more of those. And uh, brake line, I just run it underneath this way and it exits out. That was kind of the shortest run for it all. Well, one thing too I'll point out is the fuel line has to be on top of the bar because it has to clear the, the panel. On the other side, they have it underneath. Um, and they have the actual wire run underneath with a notch there. And I don't know why they did that why they didn't put the wire on top and have it that way for both but uh, anyway I followed what they did it works out seems a little weird why they've done it different from one side to the other but it, it does work so so yeah that's how that all looks up in there anyway so we'll do a bit of a slow shot so if there's anything you just want to see zoom underneath here so you can see the bracket I made up there for the ELT and the buzzer I put on the back of the panel and the wiring and such for everything else underneath you won't see any of it it's really clean it's a little hard to do a really good job when you get the wire bundles pre-wired because you got such a big bulk of wires but it's way faster so no complaints there and this is the light for the ignition just put a little bit of spiral on there just make sure there's no wear and this guy here I'll end up pushing up a bit once it's on it should stay clear of the actual radio stack so in here is the boot cowl um, you'll notice I put is it where the fans are gonna go um, 
I was able to get a dull finish, a bit of texture on it. That's all just done with the actually the high shine Stewarts, but I s painted it and then I scuffed it, then I shot a real dry uh, uh, shot on it, and it actually uh, made it flat. So I did that while I was painting the back. So you'll see what this ends up looking like. There's the bottom. I'm really happy with the finish of the paint. It turned out quite well. So this again is where the uh, sorry the transponder antenna is going to come out. And then under here is the drain, and then you have the for the cabin heat. And then on here is where the gas escalator bolts on there. So and you can see the insulation in here. So inside, they're using rubber grommets everywhere. I'm not really sure I like that idea, but had to follow suit. Rubber doesn't survive well in fires, so um, you put silicone on them to help seal them, but yeah, it's not not the greatest. Simple and easy, but I don't think it's the best way that it could be done. So I primed the inside, and that's over spray on the inside, you won't see, but it's it's covered. And that'll go on tomorrow morning and close up everything else. Oh, I fitted the windshield rough to be able to get this paint done now because I didn't want to have to try to paint with it on the airplane. Just a few shots of the runs of wire up top. How it ends up working. So I just got to fit the doors, which pretty much bolts on, get the windshields fastened. I don't plan to paint this. I don't want to lose the visibility of looking down this way. And uh, I know the painting over time, I don't know how good it's going to hold up on plastic. And I'm dealing with waterborne, so there's less chance, I think, of it sticking. So even though they use, I think, the Bulldog or whatever the heck it's called would probably make it work, I'm reluctant to do it. So, so then this, so the last thing is my engine. So uh, this just got built the end of March and uh, yeah it pretty well got out to me right away so I got it on Monday of course there'd be some shipping times and QC checks and all everything else in place but uh, Titan 340 180 horse and dual electronic ignition so yeah it should be uh, it should work very well but that's exactly how it comes from them I've done nothing to this engine. Yep. So they've the ignition coils are on, starter is on, and gear is on. Yeah, no, it looks good. I'm happy with it. And they're not, they're using a conical mount. I don't know if it's a weight thing. Dynafocals run smoother, but I'm assuming a, I'm assuming it's, it's lighter. That'd be the only reason why I think they would do this. So anybody can comment on that if they know. I never asked the question before, so. Anyway, that's it, that's all. Um, wing should be on next time I do an update and we'll be basically ready, but I figured I'd do this before I close up the front end because you won't be able to see much after that. And there's a f you just never can see these areas enough to see how guys put it together to get some good ideas, bad ideas, and whatever else. All right, over and out. Hopefully this helped some of you. Thanks.